Nearly everything is managed remotely these days, and you want to ensure that that remote access is secure. So enter SSH, the secure shell, literally. SSH connections are used across the board from configuring servers to routers, and you're going to use this protocol one way or another, and the time will come when you also need to transfer something securely. And there are a lot of ways to do that, but there's also a really handy way to use a tool called SCP, or Secure Copy Protocol. And that comes in and actually operates through SSH, and it allows you to securely copy files and directories between local and remote systems. So let's dive in and see how these things work. We're going to use both Windows and Linux in this lab, so make sure they're both up. And what we're going to do is make an SSH connection from Linux over to Windows first. So firstly, what is SSH? Well, in this case, we're going to be using the OpenSSH library to establish an SSH session. And the connection request that we're going to make is simply made by typing SSH username at IP address and then providing the password. So before I actually enter the password, let's cover briefly what's happening here under the hood. We'll go more into this in the cryptography model, but for all intents and purposes, you can imagine for now that an SSH connection is made essentially the same way when you connect to a website securely. First, you as the client, you request a connection to the remote server. The server sends their public key, and then you take their public key and wrap a secret message inside of it. And then you send it back to them, fully encrypted by their public key. And only they can decrypt the message with their private key. And now you both have a shared session key, a secret code that you can now encrypt back and forth with one another. And as long as that code is attached, you'll both know that it came from the correct sender and receiver. And that's essentially how it's working under the hood. But again, we'll go over more in the cryptography model. For now, that's what actually is happening here when I'm putting my password and a session is created. Okay, so let's log in. And you can find your password for the administrator account inside of your cyber range and go to your documents and find credentials. Cool. Okay, so let's finish putting the password in. And once I hit enter, I'm now inside of the Windows system. You can see the prompt has changed. And if I run a who am I command, I'm now the administrator account. And I'm now actually on the system. So I'm currently logged in as the administrator on the Windows system. If I run IP config, you can see this is the IP address for the Windows workstation. That's pretty cool, nice and fast. So now we can go and just remotely manage the system. Let's say we want to add a user account. Well, first we can run net users and that lets us know who's on the system. And then we can actually just run a command to add a secret user, if we will. And so we're back in Windows land, right? So net user and then user account and then user password and then the slash add. And there we go. We now have another user in the box. We just remotely managed net users shows us that new account of secret user again. Awesome. So that's really how easy it is to remotely manage a system with SSH. Let's go ahead now and delete that user. So net user username slash Dell and complete it successfully. So we don't always need to run a full session as well. We can actually just issue remote commands inside of the initial SSH connection statement. So that way we don't need to open a whole new shell every single time. That can be pretty cumbersome. So let's try and do the same thing, but also just on one line at a time. So we have to put inside of quotes and just put net users, enter in the password. And there we go, that's our response. That's what we saw on the command line inside of the Windows SSH connection, but now we can actually just issue the command remotely, put the password in and no shell has been established. So let's go ahead and check out the SCP tool now. now as we can see with the what is SCP, it's under the same library of OpenSSH. And the man page will help us out here with the next step because the hardest part about SCP is just preparing the statement of how to, how to transmit one file over to another system. And there's a lot of colon and slashes happening that doesn't feel very intuitive. So once you do it a few times, it'll feel easier, but the first time you see it, it just doesn't really connect. So the man page sort of tells us how to do this and you can see that there's an at, there's a colon, a slash, but let's actually walk through it together. So first we need a file. Let's touch testfile.txt. Then we can run SCP, and then from the relative path, refer to test file here locally. And then we put in the account name, so administrator at the IP address, and here's where it gets a little confusing. You need to put a colon after the IP address and then format the directory of where you want it to go. 
So we'll put inside of C users administrator. Cool. So let's pop the password inside. And as soon as we do, we should see a little transmission statement. Awesome. There it is. And now just for a little sanity check, we can go and issue another SSH command. But this time we'll do a directory statement to see inside of that folder if it's actually there. Awesome, so there it is. And it works the same way with an SSH connection with that key exchange, so it's totally secure, and we've now done a file transfer. So we can also delete the file. Let's do that right now. I'm just gonna change this text around. And one final sanity check just to make sure that it's actually gone. Looking good, don't see it there. We're in good shape. And that's really it for SSH connections and SCP transfers. So now we have two really simple tools at our disposal for remote file administration and also remote system management. And you can see just how easy this is on the command line.